Okay, so if you want to make some changes to your template and do a little more than you can do in Final Cut, then you would open it in Motion either directly or through the Open in Editor or Open Copy in Editor command from Final Cut Pro. The template's organized very logically. There's a set of background elements, the paint strokes, and then photo one, two, three, and four are each of these photos that the camera moves to, and the notepad, and finally the sticky note. So the main thing is you may want to reposition your content within these drop zones. These drop zones are square, and your content may not be square, and you might want to scale or reposition the content. So what you can do, I'm just going to grab uh, one of our little clips here, and I'll drag it into one of these drop zones. I'll also move the playhead to where I can see a little more clearly. And if I want to change the positioning, what I can do is just open up this Photo 1 group, open up the drop zone, if I select that drop zone, you can see it's outlined here, and I'm free to reposition this any way that I want because the mask is applied to the group. So the mask is independent of the drop zone. So you can scale your content up, you can crop it, you can rotate it, and do whatever you want to make it fit better. I'm going to hit F1 and go to the scale, and I can play with the scale to scale that down a little bit so you can see that fits in a little bit better. So that's the first thing, is it's very easy to reposition your content in the drop zones. The second thing is with the text. Um, of course, you can change the font for the text. I'll hit F7 to bring up the heads-up display. This font is that Mark Paint font that we include with the template, but you can change it to anything else that you want. There's also kind of a grunge effect applied to the text. And if we open up the text layer, you can see this is an image mask here, and there's that's using this grunge mat. So if you turn the image mask off, then the text will look solid. It won't be kind of eaten or worn away. So you can either turn that off, or if you like it but want to shift it a little bit, you can select the grunge mat and move that around a little bit if certain letters are not visible enough, or you could scale this up or down as well and change it pretty much any way you want to change the look of the grunge texture. And that works on all of the text in the project. A few other things that you can turn on and off to give you a little bit of flexibility. Let's go back to close to the end so we can see all the elements. Let's then open up this background group. And there's several elements here, like for instance, uh, I've got this brick background. You might want to use a different background. There's two copies here because one of them is enabling this shadow that kind of matches the shadow that comes on from the sun hitting the cork board. And then there's the other copy there. This brick background comes from cgtextures.com. Uh, you're welcome to use your own background there. You can just turn those off or swap out some other content. The easiest thing would be just to drag new content on top of those because it would retain the mask and the levels effect so that you get this nice shadow effect on any content that you put in there. The cork board is the whole cork board. You can see that turns that on and off. This mug stain is this stain right there. If you don't like that, you can just turn that off and that goes away. Um, there's a movie stub that you could turn on or off if you wanted to add that in. That's just an extra element that is not turned on in the project, but it's an option. The tape is a small piece of tape that's used to hold this one uh, picture in place there. And then this piece, Design Elements, Media Militia has a great bunch of content that you can get from their site. If you turn that on and off, you can see that it turns off that doodle. If you don't like that doodle, if you want to add your own, that's easy to remove that. And those are the main elements that you can turn on and off. Um, the last thing is in the sticky note, at the top right corner, there's a little doodle on that sticky note. If you wanted some text on there or your own image, you could just turn that on and off to remove it. So the template's pretty flexible. You can adjust the content within the drop zones. You can change the font. You can remove the grunge effect on the text. And you can remove the elements that we've added in here or add your own. Finally, the last thing we'll look at is changing the timing of the template. By the way, if you like this effect that we've used in the footage example in the template of each of the videos freezing and this little halftone effect with the solid background and the wiggle line around them, we've also included a motion project file that does that effect. So it's in the package. It's called Corkbork Video Effect. And here we've included just a piece of uh, iStock photo video. Uh, from iStock Photo to see how it works. And it's a sample project that has all the components built up. You would just need to drop in your own footage 
and then you probably need to adjust the timing to make it work properly. So I'm not going to go into detail about how to do this, but the project files included as just a little extra bonus. If you like the effect, then you can use your own footage in that project. So let's talk a little bit about the camera animation and how you can adjust it. The way the camera moves from one object to the next in the Motion 4 version is through a series of framing behaviors that allows it to move from each object to the next. There's also a wriggle parameter behavior placed that acts on everything, so the camera always has a little bit of shake to it. So you can adjust that amount of shake by selecting the wriggle parameter behavior and adjusting the amount and the frequency and the noisiness if you don't like that camera shake or you want to accent that camera shape. But let's look at the framing behavior. I'm going to select frame photo 1, and we can see down here in the timeline, there it is. And as we move across that framing behavior, the camera moves to that first photo over the duration of that behavior. So if you wanted it to take longer, you could just extend out the duration of that behavior and the camera will take longer to get there. So it's very easy to adjust the timing of how long it takes the camera to move from one photo to the next by changing the duration of these. In Motion 3, this is accomplished with keyframes and you would just need to select and move the keyframes. Here's what the same project looks like in Motion 3. You'll notice at the camera here in Layers tab, there are no framing behaviors. Instead, if we look down in the keyframe editor, we see a series of keyframes that determine the position of the camera. And you can see here the camera moves from the title to the first photo and then sits still before moving to the next. So similar to the framing behaviors, you could select a set of keyframes and move them. But what I would recommend, instead of selecting them here in the keyframe editor, is to go to the timeline. Because in the timeline, you can see all the keyframes bundled together. So here's the movement from the first from the title to the first photo. And if you wanted to extend that movement, you would just drag this keyframe over to extend the duration of that movement. I'll undo that. If you wanted to change when that movement happens, you could shift select both of those keyframes and move them at the same time. So whether you, you're using the framing behaviors in Motion 4 or using keyframes in Motion 3, the basic idea to change the timing of the camera movement by moving either the keyframes or the framing behaviors. Now, the way it frames this photo, it doesn't frame the photo directly. It frames a, a little null object, a little shape. You can see here in the heads-up display, the target is framing null 1. And if we look in the photo 1 group, here's framing null 1, and that's what it's framing. So if you want to change the framing of this first photo, what you do is you just move, move this little shape that's being acting like a null object, and you can change the framing of each of these little landing spots. You can get in closer or go further away. It's very, very flexible on exactly how you want the camera to land on each object before it moves to the next one. And those are basically the two components that you can use to adjust how long it takes the camera to move from one object to the next. Here it is moving to frame the second photo with this framing behavior right there and text types on and then uh, you can change the framing again let's go into photo two and there's a framing null there and we can use that to adjust the final framing okay so that's basically the idea that you can change how fast it moves by adjusting these framing behaviors you can also change where they happen in time for instance if you wanted to freeze on that first photo for a while and then okay i'm ready to move to the next one you can just drag this one back in time and the camera will move now to the next object. So very easy to adjust the timing. I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo that there. Very easy to adjust the timing of the camera move. My only caveat is that right now the, the paint strokes are animated such that the camera follows the paint strokes. So you may need to shift those in time to match. And all the strokes are contained in this strokes group and you can select each of the strokes and just move them backwards and forward in time as a group in order to make sure they still match the camera move. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully that will help you get the most out of the template in order to customize it to meet your needs. Thank you very much for buying it. And uh, even if you didn't, hopefully this will give you some helpful tips for your own projects. Again, this is Mark Spenzel for Ripple Training, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.